Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you step by step how I created this purple landscape. We'll be working on an 18 by 20 stretched canvas. It's been primed with white gesso. I've got a three inch round blending chalk brush. I'm going to use dioxazine purple, light blue violet and titanium white. I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet and I'm going to begin with purple. Starting on the edges of the canvas, I'm going to press, pull, and flick towards the center. I want it to be pretty equal from all sides, and I'm going to leave a big space in the center. And then I'll begin coming in with my light blue violet and then white, making it the brightest in the center for our sun. All right, let's switch over to our light blue violet. I'm gonna begin halfway on the purple, and then pull it a little bit into the white. I'm gonna softly blend it around into that purple very lightly, making that white space in the center a little bit smaller. I'm gonna wash that brush out really well, switch over to my filbert brush, it's a number 12. And I'm gonna pick up more of my blue with white this time. And I'm going to start creating little scoops. And this is how I'm going to begin all those little clouds. Starting from the center and working my way out. Just going to add more and more of that white. wash it out get that excess paint off switch over to a number six more white and just start creating a nice smooth round circle for my Sun now this can definitely be a moonscape if you want it could be a nighttime moon scene um, but for me it's a it's a sunset so I'm gonna wash my brush off and I'm gonna switch over to a flat brush Start pulling and flicking for soft sun rays. I'm going to go in all directions and start just getting a blurry kind of blended soft look to this painting. What I want to do is have layers and layers of uh, both those clouds, those little scoops and sun rays. And wash off all that paint, get more white, and begin adding some larger ones over here. So towards the outside to make it feel like we've got that perspective going on and we're looking way, way up and that sun is really far away, like where the tops of the trees are going to be. We want to create big in the foreground closest to us, all around the corners of the canvas, and then it's going to get smaller, smaller, and smaller as we get closer to that sun in the middle. And I like to use the filbert brush because of course it's got a nice round end to it and that's exactly the shape that I want for the peaks on my clouds. And I'm going to add some sun rays right over here. These ones are going to be a little bit more dominant or prominent, brighter in tone. back to my flat brush. I'm going to take both light blue violet and white 
blend that over. I love all the light purple tones and blues that I get by mixing the doxazine purple with that blue and the white. It's really, really pretty. So just keep building up, adding more white until you get the brightness of your sun rays that you want. Lining it up right by the center, the sun, pulling and flicking, making those sun rays wider as they get out to the end of the canvas. And you'll need to load your brush up a few times for this. Now if you decide to dry your painting off first before beginning your sun rays, you might have trouble getting this soft blended look. Take a little bit more blue and apply it down here and carry some sun rays through this corner now. Just remember to be nice and gentle with your brush strokes, very soft. When you paint soft, you'll be left with that nice soft look to your sun rays and your skies. So I'm just going to keep building up till I get a nice bright sun ray, creating that soft glow that I love. Time for some more clouds, picking up blue with my white. Now, if you're having trouble with your paint drying too fast, um, make sure your workspace is not really, really hot. So the cooler the temperature, um, the longer your paint will stay wet. Um, and I don't use any slow drying medium. The only thing I use is a little bit of water here and there. So I'm going to keep building up these clouds and sun rays. Every time I add a little bit more white, I'm getting more definition, more contrast, all those nice bright highlights. And I'm going to just play around here with overlapping and see how that looks. I'm not sure at this point if I want the sun rays to be over top of the clouds, like in front of them, or having the sun rays come in behind some of the clouds. Begin adding some larger ones down here on the bottom right. And I'm going to softly blend them into that background color and then come over with some more bright white. And I'm going to carry these clouds up sort of in the shape of a ring, like they're going to start wrapping around the sky and that sun a little bit. This is going to help to really make this fantasy, whimsical-like. Kind of that surreal look that I love. And I had so many ideas while I was working on this. I thought of putting a little castle in, uh, a staircase, of course, maybe some waterfalls. Um, but then all of a sudden I just really envisioned looking up towards that sky and that sun and picturing myself laying down on a bed of grass and some flowers around and just looking up at the trees. And so I went with that image that I was imagining and decided to go with it and paint it. And I'm happy I did. I haven't really painted anything quite like this before. 
I'm just going to keep coming in here with the white, building this up, and softening my sun rays again. So I kind of like that look of the sun rays in front of the clouds, but at the same time you can still see those cloud peaks um, through them. They have that see-through look, that transparency. I'm using a smaller filbert brush so I can get some uh, smaller little lines right up close to the sun. Remember you want your sun rays to be really small where they first come out of the sun and then they get wider as they spread out towards the end or the edge of the canvas. Okay, now it's time for some fun. I'm going to take my mini fan brush, get it wet. I'm going to pull it, load both sides, mostly dioxazine purple, a little bit of that light blue violet. And here we go. On an angle, thicker at the base. Remember, right at the edge of the canvas, those tree trunks are going to be way bigger because they're closer to us. And this really gives us a neat, dramatic perspective of looking up. So very, very small, way at the top, skinny little lines for those tree trunks. They're so far away and so high up there that we're almost unable to see them. That is a very dramatic perspective that uh, you can apply in a lot of your landscapes. You can do the same thing with flowers or grass or buildings. Now that would be really neat to do uh, another uh, painting like this in this perspective with tall buildings. Uh, maybe I'll have to uh, write that down in my little journal for painting ideas. Leave a comment below if that's something you guys would be interested in seeing. I've not done a cityscape yet. Uh, I've done some paintings of like Italian street scenes, but nothing like a cityscape or a uh, city at night with all the lights. I really like that. So I'm just tapping lightly with my fan brush, wider branches and brush strokes uh, towards the bottom. As you can see, I'm not painting branches right down to the bottom of the canvas. I'm leaving it just the tree trunk. And then I'm just doing tiny little dabs at the very top of those trees. And I'm just going to go around and do a few more trees. I think I'll do five for sure, maybe six. And I was going to carry the trees around the entire canvas, uh, creating like a, a tunnel kind of. Um, and I decided not to because I worked so hard on the sky and those sun rays that I, did, I really didn't want to cover them up. Um, but you will see a full tunnel perspective of looking up through the trees in my next tutorial. So that will be on a square canvas, 14 by 14 I believe, and more of the peach tones, um, warmer yellows, peaches, a little bit of that blue violet and different trees and they're going to go they're going to come in from every angle of the canvas. It's really really neat and that's something I've never done before either. So um make sure that if you subscribe to my channel, you tap that notification bell so you get notified and you won't miss any of my upcoming brand new tutorials. And I'm still using that Doxazine Purple. 
Um, sometimes I'm mixing a little bit of the light blue violet, but it's mainly that dioxazine purple just so that it's a silhouette and it really stands out and plays against that beautiful soft background. So here you can see me gently scumbling off some of the excess dioxazine purple on the tree. I just felt like it was a bit too heavy there and I needed to have more tree trunk and I brought the branches down a bit low. So I took that off, cleaned my brush, and I'm coming in with the final little bit of sun rays here before I finish up this painting. And I'm going to soften up these sun rays a bit more, add some, even right here through these trees in the foreground, I think it looks really pretty right in here. Just a little bit, nothing too, too much. I want to keep the main sun rays, uh, those brighter ones up in the top left. Just add the final softening touches to this painting. I really enjoyed working on this and I think you guys will too. I'd love to see your interpretations of this painting today. Um, make sure you hashtag Joni Young Art, tag me in your paintings on Instagram uh, and Facebook. Thank you so much you guys, I'll see you next time. So be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment if you found this helpful. Thanks so much for watching everybody, I'll see you next time, bye!